So with this laser scanner, of course, once you scan, you need to clean up and do all the necessary thing using our cyclone products. And by using our another cyclone product, you can actually geo-reference it. So combine with the data from the total station and combine with uh, the, the laser scanner data from our laser scanner, the point cloud from our laser scanner, you can actually make use of it, make sure that it is your reference according to the site context. At this point, at the planning and design stage, you are already working with uh, an accurate data. So not just the 3D point cloud, but you also work with the previous 3D topo drawing. So the 3D topo drawing is actually according to the site context, site coordinates, and the 3D point cloud is according to the site context and the site coordinate. So you have two coordinated or accurate data at even at the planning stage. Now, this is really important. If you don't have a very good, um, uh, if you don't have an accurate data, so in the design stage, you'll be working like anywhere in the world, right? So once it's done, so this will be delivered to the, to the architect or to the designer, especially the architect as a project leader. And by having this drawing in Revit, and especially those that have been used Revit for quite some time, I believe it is easy for you to just acquire that 3D topo drawing. You just need to confirm with the surveyor that whether it is actually according to the site contact. And of course, once you acquire it, it's easy for you to create topo surface in Revit. And from there, you can actually design further. Now, once you have this, uh, what happened to the 3D point cloud? If you want to integrate it together, we have the solution, which is the CloudWorks. So our CloudWorks is a plug-in. Uh, remember the, 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 uh, the laser scanner that captured the georeference laser scanner just now in the earlier slide? So those information, uh, those laser scanner or those point cloud, you just bring it into Revit, it will place them accordingly. You don't have to move, you don't have to scale or whatsoever. It is according to the site coordinate because those two data, the 3D topo drawing and also the point clouds are accurate data from the planning phase. So the designer are actually working with an accurate data. And of course, this is just to share with you uh, one of the workflow video from our, I mean, this is actually in um, uh, in Laos, right? Where they use our BLK360 to come up with an SB information of the project. So they don't have to capture. Now, the thing is you don't have to capture all of the site, right? So this data comes in the point cloud. You can navigate, you can walk, you can fly through, you can access the spaces. So you so that you can actually have better understanding and better decision making. And a part of that, once you have the point cloud, you can create a curate model creation. In this case, you can see right now uh, an expansion of car parking lots, right? So if an owner, let's say, for example, I would like to expand the parking lot rather than you try to measure one by one using our laser scanner, a curate and better. And you can see all the trees there. You will have a better understanding that, OK, we need to chop down the trees. We need to do this and that and whatsoever. And for those that is actually working with scan to beam rather than just model it, you have the ability to make use of it in the Navis work platform where you can actually run the clash analysis report. Now, by using our solution, which is the CloudWorks, as you can see on the tab up there. So this is a solution where uh, you can have uh, an analysis between point cloud versus the solid because sometimes you don't want to model everything. You have a new design, you want to expand that but I want to capture an existing site. Now I need to know whether it's obstructing or if it clashes with anything. So this is one of the solution. And by using the switchback function, as some, as many of you knows in Revit, in, in between Revit and Navisworld, the, the process or the workflow is much more seamless. All right, so now once architect, of course, uh, architect will use the cloud word to, again, this is where they will come up, uh, they will work with the point cloud to create site analysis based on accurate point cloud data. And from there, they will start to do the, start to create the drawings, start to do the, for development order, for building plan submission or whatsoever it is. So, but the important part is the early stage. When, when they plan, they capture the accurate data, deliver it to the an architect to work with accurate data. And from there, they will start to do all, uh, all this, uh, this typical uh, BIM process, which create a single model from single model, work with the engineers to come up with a federated model for the ritual design and review. And once verified, 
this will be used as uh, these are the data that you will work with, right? So you would use a native file, RBT, or any other. As of now, we are focusing more on the Revit, right? And apart from that, uh, depends on the project, you also need to submit the, the designer, have to submit the IFC file as well, and the, conventionally the PDF or DWG file. These are the document which is good to issue for construction. Right, so once it is good to issue for construction, so for a contractor, right, as I mentioned earlier, if it is not, uh, if it is, uh, if it is a contract, if the contract doesn't state anything about building something from the 3D, then they'll definitely have to work with the 2D. So what we are trying to promote is by using our uh, laser, our our total station, you can use that RC file. The construction team can use the RC file, put it in our tab. And you can actually do the layout. The important part is the layout. Our instrument can help the, the contractor to know where is the location that they need to start to build. So, of course, if they build it wrongly, it's, it's the workmanship. It is not uh, the, the, the fault of the instrument. So, we give you an accurate information of the location. So, you will work directly with the IFC file rather than 2D drawing, which is prone of uh, prone to miscommunication or so mistake. Right, so how do we how do you do it? Right, the data file. Uh, the usually the construction team will work with the ISP file, right, or, or probably they will work with the uh, Revit depends on the project. So once you have the Revit model, so the construction model, we can place the measurement points, and in these measurement points, you will have all the coordinates related relative to the accurate coordinate at the early stage. Right. So from there, uh, we. Export the, the construction team can export it into HTML format or into IFC file. Preferably, you can separate it by discipline, you can separate it by trade, you can separate it by level of priority, depends on your project. Upload it into our comments, which is our cloud based solution, put it in our instrument, and then you, will, you can start to draw. You can start to build uh, or create a layout for whatsoever. And uh, for first level here, you see, because we need to update. So this is where we mentioned that you can update it directly. So whatever, let's say, if there's a new measurement that you need to place or you have to move, you can actually export it into a report, update it, and a construction team can actually import it in and it will automatically highlight it in Revit and you can actually update the SB model accordingly. This is first level of QAQC. So you don't have to wait for another stage that, okay, we're going to confirm or verify this drawing as a as bit model. But what happened was they just simply changed the face. So that's what happened, right? So what we try to share with you, the first level QAQC, doing your layout, you can actually verify it. So the second level QAQC is you can actually use our, again, uh, the same instrument, uh, create a targets, right? You just place the targets anywhere in the building, uh, create the coordinates, and of course, using our laser scanner, uh, and it will capture easily the targets. And of course, uh, what you need to do is georeference it according to the site coordinate. And at this point, uh, you upload it into, I mean, you can actually import this point cloud, the georeference point cloud in Revit using the same accurate data, and it will place accordingly. So the next thing is the, the construction team just need to update, update them accordingly. So it is quite, you have two levels of accuracy, so you no longer dealing with vague information and of course a part of that this is one of the things that we have a solution as for example if you're a contractor and if you're working with a very crucial uh, part of the project say for example this wall here you want to write an analysis uh, of whether the wall is actually straight or do we need to uh, get rid of some of the plaster and need to replaster again whatsoever it depends on the contractors so this is one of the solutions where we have the ability to come up with the report and this report, you can actually export it out into a 3D PDF. So you can, when it comes to 3D PDF, as long as you have the Adobe Reader, you can view it on tab, you can view it anywhere you want. Right? So what happens is, you just need to open, click, you can navigate. So this is one of the helpful things uh, when it comes to working with 3D data on site. And uh, next is DarkFi. So this is one of the uh, technology from my car, which is the 3D uh, um, device. So the construction team, this is common. You go to the site, if there's any issue, you will snap a picture, right? And usually if you're using your phone, uh, you snap your picture, it's just a plain 2D image. So what you're looking at right now is a device that can capture 3D measurable image. So you can see right now the construction team, the, the contractor, for example, capture the image, 
and they start to uh, publish the, the link to uh, uh, via um, email or you can actually use uh, uh, BIM360 as well, right? Uh, so what they need to do, for example, like this one here, they use an email, uh, key in all the information required and send it over to a designer. So what will happen is the designer in the office, they will receive this link, and from this thing in the email, they just click and brings they will bring them to a website where they can actually do measurement. So from this measurement, of course, a designer can actually scan or can actually plan further, and you can actually communicate with other stakeholders as well, and uh, you can actually create better understanding and solve um, uh, solve the problem instantly. So this is a very good communication. So no longer one week later communicating with the same uh, information. So you share it to the image, you create the measurement online and solve the issue immediately. So the workflow is quite straightforward. So you bring the 3D, build the 3D aside, you tap, snap a picture, send it over to Bin360 because we have this Bin360 uh, 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 integration. And from there, you can actually solve uh, further with other stakeholders. And lastly, it's actually, and ultimately, is for the owner to manage the building uh, information, right? So remember the uh, the the uh, point cloud that has been captured using our laser scanner during the SBU verification. What you can do is you can capture this. Uh, uh, you can make this available online, and a part of that in that 360 view, and of course the point cloud as well. You can actually tag certain information and documents such as what you're looking at right now. So and you can access a different location virtually, and this thing happens. Uh, you can use your mobile phone, provided, of course, depend on the data set. If it is big, it will be, you will have lag, kind of things. But if you're in office, you're not even at the site, you can access many information directly. So how does it work? Quite straightforward. Uh, the contractor will, uh, the one that, uh, the S scan data that has been created by the contractor, will submit it in the LGS format or the format that we can read. And from this format, they upload it into the client's review enterprise or cloud enterprise cloud account. And they make it available for the the, the future uh, stakeholder, for example, a contractor that interested to to work with or to participate in the expansion of the site of the building and whatsoever. So the idea is they don't have to be at the site, so they can actually just access it anywhere. So they can have the information prior to the visit. So at the end of the day, if you look at this, uh, these are the challenges, and we have the solution to it. Quite straightforward. And ultimately, what we're looking at is for uh, to create the SQL data for an market, uh, for the owner to, to be able to our solution can help the owner to uh, build, to create an accurate geospatial data for a designer or an architect to work with a curate one cloud for visual study, and for uh, the design team to create an accurate design model, and for the contractor to create an SB model, and ultimately, it's actually for an owner to know the location of their asset. And these are the foundation of the digital twin, which is uh, purposely made for real-time sensor, for smart cities, for IoT and AI, public safety, transportation, of course, industrial asset, and many more. Now, if any of you would like to know more, please, uh, you can scan it directly right now. You can scan the QR code. It will bring you to our uh, beamlearningcenter.com, which is the beam field tip. You will have so many information on what are the solution and the level of beam uh, solution that we have in, in our product lineup. And of course, upon that, if you need to know more, you can email us at marketingaction.go at likeguidesystem.com uh, to communicate and to connect more. Right, so I believe this is the Q&A session, Jamal, perhaps? Wow, great. 
Okay, so this is quite a first uh, question uh, for me when it comes to disaster uh, situation because previously I always had this for security, for public safety and so on. Uh, I would see uh, it's pretty much uh, the same uh, as um, uh, public safety as well. You want to capture the, is, is, uh, for me personally, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, uh, so this is from my personal point of view, I would say that you want to capture the before and the after, right? So you first is of course uh, before disaster. We always think about our uh, heritage building and so on. So we have, uh, let's say, for example, in in Spain, if I'm mistaken, or in Europe, where where the, there's a big fire happened to one of the if I'm mistaken, the cathedral, or there's a. So what happened was they have to capture this. They have to gather all the images from online and create the reality capture of that, that or reality model, a digital model of that information. So I will be see that video scanner, you can use it to scan whatever heritage building that you have right now, uh, but we cannot foresee on the disaster part. But if that things happen, you can scan it again, you can make a comparison, but in a sense of uh, to ensure that uh, uh, whether it can become a solution to, to avoid uh, disaster, I would think that the current one, the, the existing one that you capture, combined with another application such as maybe some other disaster solution application, uh, you are working with an actual data, so we, uh, which I believe you will have a better accurate data for analysis for all this disaster kind of thing. So this is what this is my personal opinion. I was, perhaps there's more uh, application on the field. Okay? I hope that answers your question. Oh, good. Maybe. Hmm. Yeah, great, great. We 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 also looking forward to it. Uh, if you don't mind, uh, maybe uh, you can actually connect to us. Really, I, I believe you you have my email or also that you know we can connect further. We can discuss further on that. It's interesting. Wow. Toy design. Ah, oh, okay, great, awesome. Okay, uh, first thing that we need to understand is ours is more on the geospatial uh, solution, which means uh, if you are okay with millimeter, say uh, we have a. Uh, uh, perhaps uh, 0 0.3 millimeter. If you're okay with that, then it should be okay. But that 0 0.6 if I'm mistaken, 0 0.6 millimeter, uh, maybe you can see, I can confirm this better. 0 0.6 millimeter is actually like, perhaps for us, for building, it's actually quite small. But for a toy designer, that might be too big, that, that the distance between two points. So that in micro, uh, we probably don't have, I um, mean, we, we can actually go for 0 0.6 mm. That is okay for you that you can actually use that. But that solution is quite expensive. So you might think that uh, oh no, this is maybe uh, not a kind of good solution. But what we can what I can personally offer to you is actually the uh, you might want to look into photogrammetry solution where I believe there are some free solution, uh, some big solution, of course depends on processing, where you they can work with the images rather than the scanner. Right, so you might want to go and look for that, like reality capture software. Right. Um, I've, I've, I've. I've run, I've run a, a classes with one of the this U, UMP. If you just if you can type it down, it's UMPU, uh, Uni, uh, University Malaysia Pahang. Uh, but uh, this, uh, I think, uh, the the manpower came from that university. But I don't know whether uh, that manpower, those manpower, is actually a subsidiary of UMP. But you just have to check on that. But I believe. It, they all came from that university, which are uh, actually quite good in laser scanning solution. And I believe there's also a few more uh, that we have have have, have uh, uh, demonstrated demonstrated like UTM and so on. Uh, but if I were to relate with Singapore side, 
right? If I were to relate to Singapore side, and uh, I think my friend just just uh, I mean, clarified with me that UTM is also have the laser scanner UTM, and if I just bring you guys to a little bit uh, near to our base, which is Singapore, um, we have uh, in in Singapore we have this um, uh, faulty. Like Republic Polytechnic, uh, one of their department use a laser scanner to scan the 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 um flights of their airplane to do some analysis with the some uh, any of the um uh, windows that have cracked or any analysis with the window or wind or whatever they actually use uh, the BLD 3D 360 that you're looking at uh, in the video just now. So some of them actually use that. So, but for Malaysia, I just put a UTM, it's already in the curriculum, UTM, and of course the UMP, yeah, UTM, and also UMP. Um. Um, you will get just a point cloud. You will get just a point cloud. But what we are considering is, uh, what are the points? Uh, what are the files that you can work with the uh, the fusion to see? And again, uh, I do understand that. Uh, they just need you guys understand that. Uh, the point cloud that we are working from our solution is more on the bigger scale. Uh, and if inventor is more on the product manufacturing, uh, you might find the distance, as I mentioned, the distance between point clouds is quite big to get. Uh, I believe you guys are working with micro millimeter, and uh, for us, it's millimeter only. Right? So again, you can just bring it, but you still have to go through certain process to make it into a mesh. Resources. I believe uh, my friend just clarified me. So UTM, you can uh, actually work with. Uh, I don't know whether we can share the name here. Oh, hold on, yeah. Let me just get him. Okay. How about this? Can Can you uh, the for the uh, those that are, can Can you Can you contact us uh, or just get my email? You just contact us. I will. If you, uh, I think I will connect you with one of our, our, I mean, uh, my colleague that is actually from UTM as well. You can work closely with in the sense of get this kind of resources. Uh, I can just go straight away to my slides now so that you can actually get information. Uh, this one. Okay, so. Yes, please. Thank you. Yes, of course. Definitely. All right. I urge you to use it because uh, one number one is you to create a two D drawing, right? Um, uh, rather than you measure, and this is what happened. Actually. You would measure. Um, based on uh, assumption, right, and whatever you can reach. If you have a laser scanner, that should be okay. But if you have a, if you have a like like two point laser scan or one point laser, uh, distal meter, I would say, I would call it distal meter, right, distant laser. Uh, you would always look for a very uh, 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 the simplest uh, point or wall that you want to measure. But with point count, with laser scanner, with reality, you have more than that. You can do tagging and so on. So so many people in Europe already started using uh, this laser scan technology to do retrofitting and we really urge and not just that uh, for even for um, uh, heritage capturing right? so because I believe in Cape there are so many heritage buildings that need to be captured that need to be uh, recorded accordingly and if uh, if disaster comes into picture I believe you have this information beforehand it would be good for you to contribute to the country so go for it Use the list of buy from us.
product. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you're in uh, if you're in AC, architecture engine construction, right? If you're a contractor, subcon, or, or, or a builder, uh, you can start with uh, BLK360, right? The one that in my video earlier, right? So if I just, let me just uh, go and scroll back up in this video. So, hold on, yeah. Okay, this this video. Okay, this is very interesting. So you can start with this, and uh, and it's not just like you're going to upgrade later. If you have a budget to upgrade later to uh, what we we propose in the in the in the previous uh in the previous slide, there's uh, our new product which is RPC. You can start with this one because just don't underestimate this this uh this uh our baby scanner here because some of our consultants in Europe they even use this to capture a very big project. Right. The only downside of it is the only uh, downside of it is actually you have to have more batteries, of course, right? because it's a small size. But the good side of it is uh, for those that would definitely want to capture a, a, a not an easy access uh, area such as above ceiling and so on, this is the hero. Right? You can't put like 40 kilogram or 5 kilogram of laser scanner on top of a, a four ceiling. So you would want to use this solution here. So you can invest on this one here and at least have one processing software, right? Such as what we have is uh, one, uh, you notice that in here, uh, once you scan, this is the processing software. It works with any other, other, other point cloud as well, but it's a good and fast software. They can actually export out into RCP, which can be used in uh, Revit. You can export out into other formats as well. So you can, you can work with these two for a startup. Uh, one is the BLK Trinity and one is actually the software. It should be okay. Yes. Okay, so there are two uh, without tracing. Okay. Uh, we have this uh, thing called 3DR, Cycle 3DR, right? So, but the Cycle 3DR will use the points uh, by points by points to create a surface. So, eventually, what you'll get is just a surface. Right? So, what you'll get is eventually a surface. But if you're looking at into a beam tool such as Revit, uh, this is what I mentioned earlier. Uh, there are certain people in LinkedIn, and I believe uh, they are creating uh, 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 some sort of um, uh, uh, like uh, customized plugins or customized uh, script to work directly with the point cloud. So it will scan certain area and automatically create the floor based on that. But uh, be mindful that this requires, I believe, they're still under under development, still under development. Because sometimes uh, you just need to know what you want to model. That's what you're looking at right now. This model here, I don't model all of it. We don't model all of it. What we give to the to the uh, client is actually an idea of uh, you. If you think that you just want to expand certain part, you model at that area, right? So because scan to beam means that you still have to do a little bit of tracing, but by using our solution, it can do the best fit, which is faster than do manual. And uh, this is one of the solutions. Wow. Three hundred and fifty thousand points per second maximum. Now again, I have to to emphasize here is not just the point. Uh, number one is we have up until zero point. Uh, let me just okay. Uh, hold on. I just want to go to the last slide. Okay. Now uh, again, uh, the thing is you have to understand that it's not about how many how how many points that you can actually achieve, but how many and then how many uh, how density uh, is the point. You have to remember that the dense that you that you search or that you choose to, to use in your project will contribute to a bigger file size, which will you will need a better computer. These are the things that you have to remember. Now, let me just share with you for the MRT project that I shared with you earlier. Uh, the, the project is actually 
using uh, the 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 the, uh, the uh, resolution that they're using is actually 12 mm, even for an uh, infrastructure project. They have themselves uh, a scanner that can produce up to 0 0.61 or sorry, 0. Point, I mean 0 0.6 mm, uh, if I understand, 0 0.6 mm accuracy or the, the resolution. But they don't use it because they know that the farm is super big, will be massive, and it is hard for them to work with. So you have to fine tune, you have to find balance in your project. Some of the project might not need that much points. And those points, if you don't work with the point with the device accordingly, say for example, since I can create 350,000 points per second, for one minute I'll get certain million of points. But then again, you don't you don't do a good uh, best practice in capturing the site, you will not get the best data from the site eventually. So it involves uh, the scanner uh, spec, it involves how you work with the point cloud, it involves on the resolution as well. There are so many factors that is actually involved. You can work with less points, but still get a better result from your scanner. So you need just need to find balance. Let us scan. As of now, uh, not in my in my knowledge, but I hope to Google that soon. Maybe we can do that. <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, if you want to, uh, let's say, for example, uh, UAV, right? Uh, we have the solution that we uh, that I just uh, shared with you in the earlier slide. Uh, our, uh, we call it, uh, um, what we call that? Our UAV file, uh, um, uh, sorry, our, our UAV device or, or, or uh, device which is uh, the one that can capture uh the 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 less i mean the the point cloud, i mean can produce the point cloud but if you look at our other scanners such as the bk 3d bk 360 uh, the one that the small device that it is purposely for a terrestrial laser scanner which means you have to be special right uh if for if, if for um um uh, drone or whatever it depends on the the processing software as well uh, some of our software can actually create point cloud based on the images, uh, such as our Infinity, right? So we have a solution to it. But again, it depends on your budget, it depends on your uh, project as well. So preferably, if just preferably on the consumer market, um, I think Phantom 4 is actually quite, quite, I mean, most of people actually use that in, in any project, so Phantom 4. Uh, Phantom for Pro and so on, and even Inspire as well. But if you have more budget, you can go for the Matrix 600, which costs my limbs. <laughs> so that's it. Okay. Okay, um, okay, this is something that I just want to show. Previously, we have the plugins, but we no longer uh, um, um, uh, have that plugins in the in the in the lineup. Uh, but uh, yes, of course, if you ask me, this like five years ago, we do have that solution, but then we no longer actually support that. Uh, I do believe you need to have an external uh, plugins or some other plugins other than like audio system. But yes, you can bring it into 3D Studio to do that more validation. Yeah. Hello. Okay, so the first thing that I mentioned in my slide earlier, right? Uh, during the land acquisition or potential land search, your surveyor need to uh, definitely by professionalism they are producing an actual accurate coordinate according to the site context, site coordinates, and so on. For an architect, they need to double check 
they need to check whether those are actually the, the coordinates related to the to the site context, right? So of course those come from the surveying site, which we have it. Uh, I mean our solution, of course, our uh, total station multi station is quite normal or quite a champion in the market to produce a very accurate data. We have the DNSS, RTK, the non yes now. Uh, I mean the, the, the common DNSS and RTK technology, we can actually acquire a better data. So this is all below, uh, from the surveyor uh, skills and surveyor uh, uh, um, um, uh, output, right? But to make sure that in the BIM world, uh, to ensure that in the BIM world you are working in a very accurate data must come from that data. So those data, uh, we, 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 we know that is actually accurate. When we import it in Revit, for example, if you're using Revit, so Revit must actually use an actual must acquire the coordinate. So once you acquire the coordinate, it should be it should be according to the site coordinates. And once you have the site coordinate, as I as I as I in, in my understanding, uh, Revit and uh, AutoCAD are basically using the same coordinate. Once you have the numbers and you have the coordinates, you are actually aligned to the to the project. The, uh, the only thing that you have to concern is actually during the for the architect when they're about to start. The, the the modeling and whatsoever right uh usually or conventionally that will work with a very big information from uh the surveyor or probably they already pattern it uh, this is this happens uh long i mean uh throughout the time so what we are trying to promoting is the surveyor already come up with a 3d topo drawing uh according to the site coordinates that is an actual site coordinate so you just have to make use of it. you just have to make use of that site coordinate so once you make use of it, it should be okay. The only thing you just have to double confirm. That's the only thing that you need to do. So in my workflow earlier, I already share with you that during the during the uh, site uh, land acquisition or during the uh, potential land development, when you acquire, you have to make sure that your site, is, uh, of course, uh, in relation with the national data, uh, that will actually give you a better uh, understanding or better uh, input on the site coordinates. That is what we we want to promote. The data, the data from the earlier stage. Wow. Friendly user start start at um we not that I know. Well, I'm sorry, not that I know, but on uh, because I, I'm I'm answering this on our solution, right? So not that I know we have a solution for Bentley. Uh, we have one for ecosystem if I'm not mistaken, but uh, just don't don't take my word for it. But uh, we just need to double confirm. But again, uh, this this point cloud solution is quite common in the industry, and it is it, it has been in the AEC for quite some time. And if we talk about other vendor that would like to integrate point clouds from from any other solution, like even from our solution as well, from our uh, laser scanner. Uh, I believe it is quite normal for them. They will, they have a solution. I would believe that is actually happening. So you just need to find maybe uh, good uh, plugins or maybe they already have that features in there. But from like our side, again, as I mentioned, don't take my word for it. We I think we do have uh, plugins for for uh, Bentley solution, but again, I have to double check on that. But just to answer your question, you can I, I believe most of the software now can integrate with the point cloud. No problem. It's my um, it's an it's an honor to to participate and network with you guys. And if any of you would like to know more, would like us to to um to share with you or to to uh to demonstrate some of our solution, please 
don't be shy. Just uh, navigate or just email to marketing.asia.go at lifeguardingsystem.com. We'll be more than happy to, to assist you and to help you in your future uh, development or expansion. Thank you very much. Stay safe.